Once the land of the Vikings and eventually becoming a European powerhouse during the centuries prior to the 20th century, Denmark still stands as one of the leading countries in the world. Let's discover what makes Denmark the second happiest country in the world and how it's still an important institution in European society. Before the era of the Vikings, there was already obvious evidence that life thrived in Denmark. The early population was made up of hunter-gatherers and farmers, as the land provided enough fertility to enable agriculture. By the Bronze Age, metalworking had already found its way to these early peoples inhabiting the lands of what is now Denmark. However, the Viking era of the 9th century is arguably the most famous era of Denmark. They were joined by other Scandinavian peoples, such as the Norwegians, Swedes, and so on. The Viking era was an era of darkness for most parts of Europe. But for the Scandinavians, it was an era of wealth and adventure. Shipbuilding and raiding became mainstays for the Vikings. Yet it wasn't all raiding and pillaging. The Danes managed to establish trade routes to the east, further enriching their already rich society. Famous heroes during this time include Ragnar Lothbrok and Harold Gormson. By the 11th century, the majority of the Danes were Christianized, the world was entering the Middle Ages, and medieval Denmark was on the rise. The Danish royalty was able to consolidate its power, and thus began the Danish monarchy, starting with Valdemar I as its first sole king in 1157 after a bloody civil war between three factions. Denmark managed to stay independent of the Holy Roman Empire at this time. This period was marked by an expansion around the islands surrounding the Danish peninsula. The late medieval age was defined by countless wars, and this certainly drained the coffers of many kingdoms, including that of Denmark. This started the decline of the monarchy, wherein they were eventually supplanted by Holstein rulers, ruling until 1340. The entry of Protestantism in Denmark during Frederick I's reign started numerous civil wars that would define the ruling religious denomination in the kingdom. After the Count's War of 1536, which was by all means a civil war, Catholic Church properties were confiscated. By the 16th to 19th century, Denmark became a regional powerhouse, able to field a standing army and a navy. It was involved in many territorial wars, mostly against the Prussian Empire to the south. It was also involved in Scandinavian wars, mostly against Sweden, Poland, and Lithuania. Much like that of the rest of Europe, it was also a time of industrialization. Revolutionary inventions and reforms crept their way through to Danish society. Agricultural reforms were made and liberalism became a forefront ideology for many Danes. During the 20th century, Denmark slowly made its way to becoming a liberal, parliamentary democratic country, while at the same time maintaining the status quo of the Danish crown. The First World War proved to be damaging to the Danish economy as it massively limited the trade between European countries. The period between the Great War and the Second World War was marked by unemployment and never-ending economic crises. By the Second World War, the Nordic countries declared their neutrality, however, they were still invaded by the German army. But this was not permanent, as the defeat of Nazi Germany in 1945 caused a domino effect of liberation in mainland Europe. The general atmosphere after the Second World War was that of uncertainty. The country was rebuilding and the focus was to re-establish the democratic status quo and constitutional changes aimed towards the monarchy. The post-war economy was flourishing, and it eventually became a part of the European Union. Unemployment was virtually eliminated, infrastructures were put up all along the country, and the economy began to stabilize. Due to the fear of Soviet expansion, Denmark, along with many other Western European countries, decided to form the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, to deter any Soviet and, today, Russian aggression. Denmark still maintains its monarchy, albeit as a historical institution more than anything. The GDP of Denmark is marked at $400 billion, making it one of the richest European countries. This is due to the fact that Denmark has a low corruption index. 
Denmark is also an agricultural country with products such as milk, wheat, barley, potatoes, sugar beets, pork, rye, rapeseed, oats, and poultry. Additionally, the country is also home to a number of industries, namely wind turbines, pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, shipbuilding and refurbishment, iron, steel, non-ferrous metals, chemicals, food processing, machinery and transportation equipment, textiles and clothing, electronics, construction, furniture, and other wood products. The flag of Denmark is a white cross with a red background. In Danish legends, it's called the Danebrog, which apparently fell from the sky in Estonia on the 15th of June, 1219, during the Battle of Lindenis. Denmark is one of the smaller Nordic countries with a total land mass of 42,000 square kilometers. However, a large portion of the country is made up of smaller islands and islets. The capital of Denmark is located in Copenhagen. It is bordered by Sweden to the northeast and Germany to the south. The highest point in Denmark is Stora Molehoi, which is located 171 meters above sea level. The country is generally considered to be flat, which means the country is prone to flooding, especially in the areas below sea level. Denmark has a well-defined climate, being mostly coastal. Winters and summers differ vastly from each other. The average maximum temperature in the country is 16 degrees Celsius or 60 degrees Fahrenheit, with the minimum temperature being 0 degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Denmark has a diverse society. Out of the total population of 6 million, 84% are Danish, with 15% being other populations such as Poles, Romanians, Iraqi, and so on. The main language spoken in Denmark is, of course, Danish. Faroese and Greenlandic are also spoken as these are also Danish territories. However, English is also considered as the second language of the country. A large portion, 71% to be exact, of the population are Lutheran Christians, with other Christian denominations coming up at 24%, the Muslim population making up 4% of the total number of religiously aligned peoples. Let's talk about Danish food. Here are a few must-try dishes that highlight Denmark's rich culinary heritage and cultural significance. First, we have smorabrod, an open-faced sandwich typically made with rye bread and butter. Topped with a variety of ingredients such as fish, meats, cheeses, and garnishes, smorabrod is not just a meal but an art form, reflecting Denmark's appreciation for fresh, high-quality produce and careful presentation. Next, we have flæskesteg, the Danish version of roast pork. Traditionally made with a crisp, crackling skin, this dish is often enjoyed during festive occasions like Christmas. It showcases the Danish love for hearty, flavorful meals and is typically served with red cabbage and caramelized potatoes. Another iconic dish is stekt flæsk, Denmark's national dish, consisting of crispy pork slices served with a creamy parsley sauce and boiled potatoes. This comforting meal is a staple in Danish households and represents the country's emphasis on simple yet delicious home-cooked food. Finally, we have frikadeller, Danish meatballs made from a blend of pork and veal, seasoned with onions and spices, and fried to perfection. These meatballs are a beloved comfort food in Denmark, often served with potatoes and gravy, and are a testament to the country's culinary tradition of creating flavorful, hearty dishes from humble ingredients. Let's talk about a few famous people from Denmark. I'm sure many of you will recognize most of these personalities. Hans Christian Andersen, the famous author known for giving us the story of The Little Mermaid. Who could forget Mads Mikkelsen, the actor who is part of the famous Mikkelsen family of actors. Yet another famous Dane, Soren Kierkegaard, considered to be the first existentialist philosopher. Margret II, a member of the royal family abdicated on January 14th, 2024. Lastly, we also have Tycho Brahe, one of the most well-known astronomers of all time. 
If you enjoyed this video on Denmark, you'll love this next one.